This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. With Jamie Lint and Jeff McGuire, I'm Chuck Hines. Great to have you with us today on Double T 97.3. Uh, let's see, uh, on the docket today, we have uh, Thursday Night Football. Uh, normally, this would be uh, quite the game, but um, <laughs> it's, it's not uh, with the Raiders and Chargers. I mean, that's been a very heated rivalry over the years to the point where uh, when they were both in their former respective cities, they'd be having like extra security and, I mean, fights in the stands and I mean, they, they truly hate each other. Fan base, teams, cities, every, everything. Um, Oakland and, and San Diego, but it's it's probably lost a little bit of its uh, luster. And what helps you lose luster of things is losing records. They're both they both got a losing record five yeah, and five and eight. That tends to not help. Right? No, when neither one of them are good. Uh-uh. And. You know, and and Chargers now without their quarterback Justin Herbert, and he's he's shut down for the season. And this game is uh, going to be played in Vegas, where they're going to have the Super Bowl this year. Um, it, it's just it's crazy to think that um, you know how once was Vegas was this pariah, you know, in, in the NFL's eyes, um, you know, and Major League Baseball, and and the NBA I think was quicker to kind of come to Vegas. Obviously, the NHL was because they were the first team there, and you're going to have an NBA team there at some point in time, probably probably through expansion. Although who knows, maybe a team, maybe they'll allow a team to move there. Um, it's just it's just crazy to me that what once was looked as like sin city, and we want to just put our hand up to it and not have anything to do with it, and. You know, Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle banned from baseball because they were door greeters at a casino. That's what they were. They were door greeters at a casino. And Major League Baseball said, you can't be associated with a team. And now Major League Baseball is going to have a franchise there. And they're going to play the Super Bowl there. I mean, it's going to be, it's just, it's, it's, it's nuts. But you know what the, 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 what the deal is, the bottom line is, it's just about the money is what it is. Sure. It's, sure. Ju- it's just, it's just about the money. Yeah. So. Um, I think the country as a whole, society is, I mean, morality has changed a little oh, bit. Oh, softened quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, and so that probably factors into that as mm-hmm. well. Um, Much more acceptable today. You know, I, I for one, am, am, am never been a person that's, like, bothered by gambling. I mean, if people want to waste their money, let them waste their money. Um, that's that's totally their choice. Mm-hmm. Um, I get that sometimes people need to be you know, protected from themselves. Yeah, governed, but, right? Yeah, but but at the same time, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I just kind of feel like that's on you. And so, <laughs> no doubt, right. And so right. the whole gambling thing has never bothered me. I, I still, I mean, I, I think that Vegas is a cesspool and uh, <laughs> have no desire to ever spend another minute there in the rest of my life. You may uh, have to go back, though, for baseball. If I mean, Yeah, if I have to, I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Um, yeah, I just, I just think, I think you're right, and that that the it's softened a little bit mm-hmm. or whatever, and I think it's money, okay, and I'm sure that there is, I, I mean, you can, I mean, you can go to Vegas to watch a baseball game, and not end up in a strip club or hammered, drunk in a gutter. I mean, it's possible. Yes, it is. Right, you can just go it's, to that city. And not visit those places. It, it's more of a it's it is more of a uh, tourist spot than it probably ever has been, um, and less of a just total debauchery. I mean, you, yeah. there's still plenty now, of you're, debauchery. Yeah, if you're walking down on the strip, you're going to get handed little baseball cards with, sure. that kind right. of op- give you a little peek behind the curtain. But man, okay. those guys are creepy. That are handing those it's cards out. Such a again cesspool. And this is, okay. I, I, I guess my my point of the whole deal was it's just kind of in in my lifetime over the last you know thirty forty years of where it's gone from the NFL Major League Baseball those two in particular wanting really nothing to do with Vegas like doing everything they can to avoid Vegas push the gamblers out 
everything that they could do to do that. And and now the the full embrace, we are brothers in crime, so to speak, is that's what's fascinating to me. This the full circle of yeah. of of where of where it's come to the point where you put your premier game now in Vegas and they wanted nothing to do with Vegas in the seventies and eighties. Yeah. I will say that um I am I think I've grown a little bit tired of so many gambling commercials watching sports. Oh events. my god, yeah. Yeah, that that seems to be a little bit much, but I mean, they're going to take the money that they get. Heck, if, if if they were offering a ton of money to us to advertise, mm. sure, you know, oh, we, we take would, it, right? Yeah. yeah, we take it. Yeah, we probably would as well. So. Yeah, we, it, but that just feels like it gets there's, there's so much of it. There is one. There is one thing that we do not. There's two things we don't take right now. We don't take any vaping, and we don't take any of the uh, syndicated. Um, you know, marijuana shops that are out there. We don't take any of that advertising. Mm-hmm. So we, we, that, that, that is our internal policy. Uh, we do not, we do not take that. So he says this, why is Chuck so old? We've gotten this twice in the last, I mean, follow me around, man. I mean, I, I think you would find that there's things that I'm a immature, you know, petulant child about. Um, and, and some things that I do that you would go, why, why is this 63 year old man doing that? I mean, so I, I don't I don't feel My, like I act like a sixty three year old man. Sometimes I might say things that sound like a sixty three year old guy, but I mean I I'm telling you, man, I in my mind, I'm in my early forties. Okay. I think sometimes I think sometimes with my adult children, I'm more of the one that you gotta watch out for than than them. Uh I would not you know, I mean obviously you're older than me, but I would say that I act older than you. There's I'm square and just more boring than Chuck. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I wonder why that, that texter doesn't say, why is Jamie so old? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody says this dementia is the thing. Oh, I'm aware. I mean, it's, it's a sad thing, but I don't, I hope I never, I don't have it yet. I don't, I don't think there's some things I'd like to have amnesia about, but not mm-hmm. that uh, lady Raider basketball yesterday at the arena. They had I don't know what the final final attendance was. Let's see. They had, they announced the attendance at thirteen thousand seven hundred forty eight. Now I believe it because there was virtually somebody in every section um, at the arena yesterday, and generally speaking, they were under the age of fifteen. Okay, uh, maybe even under the age of maybe twelve and under. And um, I, I think it I think right for the team itself. Not that we're going to have these raucous environments and. Uh, in some of these Big 12 cities, and there may be there may be some places where it gets a little loud, but the thing about yesterday was the kids really didn't understand when they should yell or not because there'd be times when Incarnate Word had the ball and they were just they were screaming louder than when the Lady Raiders had the ball, and it was it was confusing. I think to the in the first half, and I think it was confusing to both teams going, okay, why why are they screaming? Well, they're just they're screaming to scream. They're just they were just screaming to scream. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Tech did win the ball game last night or yesterday afternoon, I should say, seventy six to thirty five. Um, Jazz Shavers led uh, the Lady Raiders with fifteen. Kyla Freelon had a double double. She had ten points and eleven rebounds. Bailey Maupin went over five hundred points in her uh, early career as a Lady Raider. She uh, finished the day with eleven points on on the day. She she only played twenty five minutes. They got her out of there. Uh, along with some of the others, and so you had you had four and double figures. A couple of things that just stood out to me: you had almost had more points off turnovers than rebounds. You had forty five rebounds in the game, and forty four points off turnovers. Mm-hmm. This was a team coming in that averaged about twelve, and they had thirty one. Tech had twenty two, which is way, 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 way too many, way, way, way too many. And um, despite the fact that you had twenty offensive rebounds. You only had 11 second chance points. So I guess my question for you is, should I be worried that you were only up 11 at halftime, or should I be super excited that you outscored them by 30 in the second half? Uh, I would, 
It's, this is kind of how the season has gone. You've been you've yeah, been, you definitely been a second half team. Yeah. I love. It feels like coach has made some great adjustments at halftime, and the girls are really following that plan after the break. To me, the big concern is could she make adjustments like before tip off? <laughs> she's, just, she's trying. Okay, <laughs> like put a game plan in place on no, Tuesday, they, and then on Wednesday, right before tip off, hey, we're changing completely what we decided. They have one. Okay, <laughs> they have one. They would like for them to start <laughs> from the get go to follow that. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three is presented by. Cantex Roofing and Construction. Good morning, Drive. All right, this is your your choice, Jamie. I have uh, two articles here. Uh, they're both involved in some kind of ranking or assessment of the season. Which would you like this uh, article on head coaching grades for this past year or ranking the matchups for the bowl games uh, for the Big 12? Which would you, which would you like? Oh, I think I like both. We, so whichever one... I'm good with either. I like both of them. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll we'll rank the bowl games. Okay? okay, we'll rank we'll rank the bowl games. All uh, of them or the Big Twelve? Just ones? the Big Twelve ones. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. So let me let me get down to where they have. They this is the order that they have, uh, and this is this is based on a confident level about uh, finish with the one that this person is least confident in terms of the big 12 winning. Okay. okay? So, all right. So that's the, that's the criteria. Okay. I like this game. So the first, uh, the number one listed was the guaranteed rate bowl, which is Kansas and UNLV. KU is favored by 12 and a half points. This game is, uh, in Phoenix. Yeah. It seems like that would be high on the list. Yeah. 12 and a half. That's a big line. Yeah. So they cite the running game of Devin Neal and Jason Bean, the quarterback, I uh, feel like it's going to be a mismatch for UNLV that isn't even in the top half of the Mountain West Conference. Uh, next up, I think this is going to be a fun game uh, to watch, the Texas Bowl between Oklahoma State and Texas A&M, uh, two former kind of rivals in the Big 12. Um, they didn't have the the longstanding rivalry that, that we did or Texas did with the Aggies, and certainly their big rivalry is, is Oklahoma. Um, A&M is favored by three. Uh, the question is, do the Aggies have enough players? Um, because this person says it feels like half their team is in the transfer portal. I, I haven't assessed the Aggies transfer portal. Lots of distractions going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, for Oklahoma State, they could finish the season off with 10 wins. Um, this will be probably a – I don't know if there will be a heavy Aggie presence there. It will be interesting to see – because like if if it were flipped from a few years ago, where they had just hired Jimbo Fisher, and they were playing in the Texas Bowl, people would be I think flocking to that bowl from the Aggie standpoint. I'm not sure the new coach. Well, he may be better for them, but he's certainly opposite of the hype train. <laughs> they didn't give him a, a blank plaque that said, "Here's your national championship trophy. Just when you get it, we'll put the year on it." I would imagine that the A and M fans will still show out there in Houston. There's just so many in that area. Right, right. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying, though. That if no, I agree that there's the, more the, excitement. Before. Yeah, the, the hype, the hype train probably they they probably look at this like like what you have said many times. Like, hey, oh, who knows? Maybe the Aggies are still full of hype. They're 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 full of something that could be full of hype, right? In addition to other things. <laughs> I, I feel like that game is a pretty much a toss-up. I'm surprised mm-hmm. they have that one so high on this list. Yeah. Uh, next up is the Liberty Bowl. It features Iowa State and Memphis. Uh, Memphis finished the year at 9-3. and three. Uh, They lit up the scoreboard. Uh, they averaged almost 40 points a game, 300 yards passing. Uh, they have a, a flaw defensively. Um, Iowa State will probably just run the ball and control the clock. Uh, he said, this person says, I trust their defense enough to slow down the Memphis offense. Okay. Okay. And, he, and this guy picked Oklahoma State over over the Aggies. Uh, next is the Alamo Bowl featuring Oklahoma and Arizona. Man, do you think Arizona's going to want to be here more than, the, than Oklahoma? I would guess so. Yeah, just based on the fact that Oklahoma's not necessarily – this is not what their usual end game is. This will be their last game as a member of the Big Twelve too in football, because they're off to the uh, off to the SEC. Um, apparently, this they, they talk about the Wildcats finishing the season strong. They'll be a formidable opponent for the Red Raiders next year. Oklahoma will have a new 
starting quarterback. They'll have their five-star freshman, Jackson Arnold. Anytime you start a freshman quarterback in a bowl game, I mean, first game. Oh, no no question. You know, it's usually a little bit easier when he's a five-star. <laughs> right? Challenges. Mm-hmm. All right, next up is uh, the Red Raiders and uh, Cal Bears. Tech's favored by two and a half. And the over-under on this game is 58 points. Uh, he says this game should be a fun game for Texas Tech. Cal isn't a great team, and I guess you could say the same thing about Tech here, but they really needed some time off to get healthy with Baron Morton back to 100% and then in parentheses, hopefully. I don't know that he's 100. He's certainly better than probably what he, what he was towards the end of the year. This person says the Red Raiders shouldn't have any issues here at all. Any issues here at all. As you've seen the Red Raiders play, Is your confidence factor over 50% yet in this game? I think it's still about 45. 45. Do you have a tendency to change once you get on site? You get, no. No. Okay. No. Un- unlike me, I have a tendency to get caught up in... Talk. Parades. Talk. <laughs> it's parades. Uh, West Virginia and North Carolina. North Carolina has been kind of taking it on the chin. Uh, seems like West Virginia uh, obviously is... Had a much better year than what folks thought. Um, uh, Drake May, uh, as uh, North Carolina finished the season losing four of their last six with Drake May playing quarterback, and now he's announced he's going to skip this game. Um, he's already committed to Notre Dame. Yeah, the recipe for success is simple for West Virginia. They need to establish the run game, control the clock. Shouldn't be too hard against the Tar Heels defense. Central Florida plays... Um, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech in the Gasparilla Bowl. Um, let's see. What are they? they have uh, the line is uh, four and a half for UCF. Uh, K-State plays North Carolina State in the Texas Bowl. I think K-State's got a similar problem. They've got Avery Johnson starting a quarterback. Of course, he looked like a Heisman Trophy winner against us. Yeah, I think he'll be all right. Uh, uh, Will Howard is gone. And... Um, they say Johnson is athletic enough to cause problems for North Carolina State. And says also Chris Klein will have these guys ready to play. Well, we'll see. And then finally, the Texas uh, Longhorns playing in the Sugar Bowl, Bowl against Washington. Uh, to me, this is a toss-up game, even though Texas is favored. Washington offense legit with Michael Penix Jr. I don't think he's seen a defense like Texas professes. Uh, buckle up on this one. It'll be a close game. You think Washington wins this game? Yes. Okay. I think it's a really good game. I think Washington. Washington wins. All right. The over-under on it is 64. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Hey, good morning. 7.15 this morning on the Morning Drive. We'll have uh, Thursday Night Football on the air for you tonight. The uh, Chargers and the Raiders from Vegas. We'll have that at 6.30 on 100.7. The score tomorrow. Uh, boy, some... Uh, High school hoops, and I'll get to the the featured attraction in just a moment. First, it'll be the Liberty Girls and the Liberty Boys. They'll take on different teams. Girls face Childress. Boys face Dimmitt. Kind of common this time of year. Uh, That'll be on 93.1 Texas FM. Coverage begins at 630. And then uh, tomorrow night at the New Box, which is probably almost 30 years old, uh, (laughs) I wonder what at what point in time does the new box become older than the old box? I don't somebody there's somebody out there that knows the answer to that question. I think anyway. these are questions that only you ponder because I don't hear anybody else talking about the boxes. The new box or the old box? box I don't really hear that. It's okay. just kind of a you thing. Okay. Well, when I came to town, it, it was, you know, it was, it was you, know, you got to go to the box at Monterey and then and then when they built the new one, they called it the new box. Anyway, the bottom line is this. Monterey and, and the Cooper girls, Lubbock Cooper girls will play. That's, a I think, a delicious matchup uh, tomorrow night. That'll be at 6. We'll have that for you on 100.7, the score. How, who, who, who comes out on top here? Who has Man, the, this is a toss-up. Who, um, has the, who has the better team? Do you th- who has the better team? Like the better team. Who has the better team? Yeah, the supporting cast is, I mean, Cooper's deeper. Okay, Monterey has the higher-end talent with mm-hmm. two 
Division One players on the team and another girl that might be as well. Um, but Cooper's just deeper. There's just there's just more to them. They got a great point guard. Um, the couple got a couple of great shooters. Um, yeah, I man, that's a good question. I, I think I'm going to lean towards Cooper. I I, I thought you I think, might. I think I I'll lean you towards might. Cooper. But both both really good teams. Um, obviously, Monterey's just more about their stars, and they they don't have the supporting cast. Mm-hmm. You know, um, how many potential Division One players are playing in that game? Are there more than two? Well, the stars for Cooper are they've committed to D two schools. Okay, so yeah. how many? Let me maybe the better question is how many. Scholarship basketball players are going to play in tomorrow's tomorrow's game. One, two, three, four, five. Six. I'd say at least six. Okay, that's a big number. Yeah, I'd say. At I least mean, that six. is a big number. I don't care if you're playing Division guess. Two or Division One. You know, to be yeah to to, to yeah, play well. at that, be able to play at that level, um, and then to have two teams playing each other. That's 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 good. Okay, and we'll that have number, that game. And that number was even higher when Monterey played Friendship. Earlier this year would have been even higher. I think it was eight. Yeah, possibly. And you might have had possibly. You might have had three or four Division One players in that game. No. Three. Man, eh, probably three. Three. Okay. Three. One for friendship, friendship and, and two for Monterey. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Seven eighteen this morning here on the morning drive. So just a, a bit of a deviation. And then on Saturday, we'll have uh, coverage uh, all day long with Optimum Game Day Live. It begins at noon from um, from Shreveport. So the, the, road to, the road to Shreveport, well, it ends at Shreveport, right? Because you're going to... You're gonna... Well, hopefully there's a road back to Lubbock. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I'm planning on. Well, I don't know that we're going to have any coverage of your road back to Lubbock. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just have the road to Shreveport. Okay, okay well. well... The road to Shreveport. Um, it, you, uh, you go through go through Big D to get to Shreveport. But uh, we'll have, have coverage all, all day Saturday. And then, of course, after the game, it's the Double T 97.3 Coors Light postgame show. You'll hear the game uh, from, uh, from Shreveport. Cal and Tech uh, kick is at 8.15 on, on Saturday night. We'll also have an NFL game for you on Saturday. Vikings and the Bengals from Cincinnati. Okay. Um, at what point in time, because the NCAA – or the courts, or everybody. We talked earlier about how things are getting, I guess, looser and looser, and just you know more flexible and flexible. At what point in time will guys be able to enter the transfer portal and then all of a sudden become eligible for their teams, their new teams, to play in the bowl game? For instance, Tech has three guys that they've just acquired through the transfer portal. Why can't those guys play in the bowl game, Jamie? Because they just played for another team. I, okay, but at some point in time, they're going to say, "Well, you know what." We're just going to go ahead and let y'all play, because mm-hmm. the coaches, all the coaches, are going to campaign for. Well, hey, if they're here, they might as well practice with us because they're going to be enrolled, right? Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that happens yeah. in the future. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised at all. I'm just hoping it's um, after the point where. <laughs> I'm covering. I'm done covering college athletics. Okay. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> so I think you, know, you think be... it'll be like 15 years before it happens. Oh you no! Think it'll I, be think, I think it would be within the next. Yeah. I think it would be. I I would say this. We're already point. We're at a point as of yesterday where you can play for. Uh, you can transfer multiple times without penalty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we're at that point. The courts have ruled that. So at some point in time. The uh, courts will rule, well, you know what? If you've made your decision to go, we can't stop you from going and playing for somebody else. So, you know, yeah, if you suit up and decide at the end of your conference championship game that you're going to take your talent somewhere else, then sure, the next week, yeah, you can be in Lubbock and getting ready for the bowl game. Wouldn't surprise me if that was within the next two years. It just feels like the NCAA is afraid to say no to anything. Right. There's, there is no spine. There's no backbone. Yep. There's, there's no spine. There's no backbone. All right. So a guy that you picked up yesterday, his name is Devin Cromwell. He, he <laughs> don't, I'm going to try not to laugh because I don't even know if I can pronounce this school's name right. The University of Guelph in uh, Toronto. 
I'm just going to be completely mm-hmm. honest with you. I'm watching highlights yesterday, uh-huh. and they've got some of the Canadian Football League rules, like where a guy can go in motion and be running towards the line of scrimmage okay. at the snap of the ball, and that'd be legal. I, I didn't know there was college football in Canada. Okay, I didn't. I, I'm, I, did, I'm right I seriously did not know. I, I, wouldn't, I would not have been able to tell you this. He's I, 6'1". He's a defensive back. He, uh, he played for the Griffins, spelled G-R-Y-P-H-O-N-S. 29 tackles, two interceptions, seven pass deflections, forced fumble, forced fumble recovery. Uh, of course, he announced his commitment through Instagram. There's no, there's no longer a hastily called news conference. It's just Instagram or on X, formerly known as Twitter. When do we stop saying that? Um, uh, I haven't I think started it's, saying X, so it's still Twitter. Yeah, I still say Twitter. Okay. Um, I think this is like a good use of Twitter. Like when you commit, okay. when you've broken news, okay. I think that's a good use of Twitter. I like the hastily called press conference. Uh, we got to have a press conference for every kid that no, no, decides no, to commit No, I just prefer somewhere. the hastily called. No. Now, now the blessed and honored to have received <laughs> kind of text or tweet we don't need. Just tell us when you make your decision. We don't mm-hmm. need to know all of them that you're deciding. Between. He says this, I look yeah. forward to continuing to chase my dreams and helping pave yeah. the way for future Canadian football players. Well, chase is a good word for him because he's got like blazing <laughs> fast speed. Okay. So hopefully... Uh, he might be a guy that you might use in kick returns or something like that, too, because this dude is all about speed. Okay. Um, so that's good. That's what you want in your defensive back. Sure, sure. Yep. Uh, the other, another guy that you've gotten here recently, this was yesterday, Caleb Douglas. He's a receiver. He's 6'3". He's 200 pounds. Uh, he spent uh, the first couple of years with Florida. Okay. Yeah, not not huge numbers for Douglas, mm-hmm. but I guess you're, you're kind of going off the, well, if – Florida wanted him. He must be pretty good and just hasn't had, you know, big numbers in his time there. But He's a uh, Texas kid. He got hurt in the fifth game of the season, had a season-ending injury, had 11 catches, 103 yards, 33 yards, and a, and a touchdown. As a true freshman, he, he started two games and had 10 catches, 175. He had offers uh, for, when he went to Florida from USC, LSU, and Notre Dame. Yeah. So – you know, I don't know if that's a good get or not. I guess we'll we'll find also out. Also got an offensive lineman from mm-hmm. Toledo. His name's Vinny, so that's cool. <laughs> Scurry, I think. What well, S C I U R Y. So your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time now for Jamie's question of the day on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T ninety seven three. Okay, this one's gonna go off the rails a little bit. I'm gonna let you guys get goofy if you want to get goofy. Well, I feel like it's like playtime for I'm going five to minutes. Allow it. <laughs> I'm going to allow it. Okay. Sanctioned. All right. So you know how sometimes you know as kids we were all excited about Christmas because mm-hmm. we knew Santa was going to bring us some presents, but sure. there were certain times where. You know, you visited grandma and grandpa the week before, or maybe mm-hmm. the aunts and uncles came to town or whatever. And so you already had Christmas presents, some some Christmas presents before it got to be Christmas, right? Okay, so you already had a few things. I got to be honest with you. I don't think that ever occurred at our house. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I just don't, I, you know, I don't think we... Got to do that. So just just go along, Chuck. Okay, I'm going go along. along. <laughs> go along. <laughs> so um, little Joey McGuire's grandparents came to town last week. Oh, okay. And they gave him two things. Okay. What did okay. they give him? They gave him a new sweater. Okay. Okay. And they gave him one starting quarterback for all 12 regular season games next year. Oh. Those were the two things. Ooh, okay. That Joey McGuire's grandparents gave him. Mm-hmm. All right. If Joey McGuire now this week went to the mall mm-hmm. and sat on Santa Claus's lap, okay. And Santa says, "All right, little Joey, you've got two things you can tell me you want for Christmas." Mm-hmm. What is little Joey McGuire asking Santa for for Christmas? That this is kind of like the kid that doesn't have any socks and underwear, and the same kid that doesn't have like race cars and a basketball and a football to play with. It's like what is sensible and what you really need, like everyday use, and what the would be just 
cool as hell for, you know, a few months until that ball gets all scuffed up and things like that. Because the sensible, the sensible answer for Joey McGuire would be socks and underwear or, in, you know, a, a functional new tie that, um, you know, is not, you know, a novelty item that you can only wear like one time of the year. Like I'm wearing a new tie today and it's, I can only wear it like right now because it's a Santa Claus tie. Okay. Can't wear this in July. I'm going to say, I'm going to say a left tackle and I'm going to say an edge rusher that somebody to help solidify the line and somebody that can put pressure on the quarterback. That's what I'm going to say. Joey McGuire should tell Santa Claus is what he wants for Christmas. I would like to remind Jamie that he said we could go a little crazy here. <laughs> okay. Joey sits on Santa's lap and he's kind of humming a tune. And he goes, Santa, I would like five offensive linemen, four defensive backs, three linebackers, two defensive tackles, and a wide receiver to catch the deep ball. Wow. That was very good, Jeff. But I, but he, I said he could only ask Santa for two. Right. Things. Well, he was singing, so he was singing his own little tune. <laughs> Just pick your you, two favorites. Just you, you said we could go off the rails, and just then now you're past now, the now, rails. You're, now you're just now you're trying to put rails up. So you know. And let's be honest: <laughs> if you get to sit on Santa's lap, are you following rules? No, you're telling that man everything you want for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go with a playmaker at the wide receiver position. Okay. Okay. And I am gonna go with continued support with nil money. Oh, because I think those two things are pretty. Important. So you're asking grandma for, hey, grandma, just give me cash. I don't care that you've got this thoughtful gift for me. Just give me the cash. Grandma already got, gave me a sweater mm-hmm. and a course starting quarterback. OK, well, the other, what about I'm, the other grandma? We're just talking to Santa. OK, okay. <laughs> why, why are we bringing other grandma? <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah. I think those are two things that are that are key to the next step for this program. Yeah. OK. Because it feels like the NIL money thing is uh, across college football is going to continue to be a huge factor, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just got to get a playmaker, man. Somebody that like, man, get the ball in that guy's hands and let him work. I mean, Taj was great last mm-hmm. year and did so many things, moved the change over and o- chains over and over and over again. But he's not like an electric playmaker, mm-hmm. Crabtree, you know, like Jakeem Grant. And we need one of those badly. Yeah. Uh, somebody said this, Jamie wins the point. There wasn't even any points here, but Jamie, you win the point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Texter. Uh, somebody says this, he should ask Santa for the number one recruiting class. Okay. Well, you got to develop them too, all right? That's, that's a smart answer, though. Yeah. Because it's just one class he asked for, so that's only one of his <laughs> two gifts. <laughs> right. Uh, two 1,000-yard receivers. He needs to ask for an offensive line and a capable OC. Well, I mean, you get better players, you're going to have better coaches, right? Isn't that how it works? In theory? Kind of? Yes. Maybe? Yes. Uh, this, come on, Chuck, it's a hypothetical question. Here's, a, here's somebody playing the role of Jamie. Jamie, Chuck, you can be crazy. Chuck, nah, dog, I'm good. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever said, nah, dog, I'm good. <laughs> That sounds like something Sneed would say. I might just say I'm good. <laughs> but I'm not going to say, nah, dog, I'm good. I'm not a, mm-hmm. that's that's not within my vocabulary. Um, I'm with Jamie. This happened in my household too. Pretty sure that it happened to everyone I knew growing up. Okay. So right. was it that you weren't allowed to receive gifts? No, I just, we just, I, I just, you know, we had my, we, I grew up with three grandmothers and one grandfather's kind of, you know, everybody's got their craziness in their families. Right. I'm and not, I think I'm not going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way, it, just the way it worked. Just the way, just the way it worked. Um, and not one of them gave you a gift. No, they did. But I, just can't, Christmas? I, I think, I think with my one grandmother, if she sent gifts, which she usually did, those were opened on Christmas day. And the other one, the one that called me uh, Chucky Mike along with my aunt that my mom disliked, I think, I don't know that, 
I guess we got, I think we got gifts. I, I can't remember really anything memorable. Maybe it was cash. I can't, I just, nothing, nothing of significance comes to mind. And then, uh, then, the, then my, my grandparents out in California, uh, they would, they would send something. But if we opened that, it would be opened up Christmas, Christmas day. So I guess that's kind of that's, my one grandmother, the one in California who was technically not, was not blood, but it was, you know, what she was her grandma. Um, she would knit the blankets and stuff like that. Those were always cool. I still have some of those, you know, that I fall asleep under at night, you know, while I'm watching TV. I still have some of those. Oh, somebody says this can't do much better than Hudson, Jamie. Yeah, Micah Hudson. I, I know. Well, let, let's well Jamie see wanted him. more. No, let's see him actually turn into that playmaker. Yeah, that's, that's he's true. what we expect, but let's let's see it actually happen. Yeah. Seven forty this morning. This is the morning drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie Lent, Jeff McGuire, and Chuck Hines come to you this morning from the First United Bank Studio. We uh, look forward to hearing from you on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double dot com for that on the mobile app. Visual Edge IT hotline is open too at 806-771-0973. Jamie and mine's Christmas present will be delivered to you tomorrow morning at 601. It is a <laughs> gift that you are going to You're going to love. love. You're, you're going to say, why, why can't we have this gift every, every single day? Every time. Sitting... And I'm not sure, I, I, Hexton usually sits where Jamie sits for at the end of the bench, but I don't know if he'll switch seats. My guess is no. But Jeff Haxton and Chris Level, oh my God, will have the red carpet rolled out tomorrow. Dynamic duo. There'll be, there'll be omelet, an omelet station here. There'll be, you know, juices of every kind. What special pastries. requests have they made of you, Jeff? None. Yet. I don't even know that they know the format of the show. It doesn't matter, mm. Jeff. Doesn't <laughs> just it's their format. The, the golden voices. In fact, in fact, it's so much their format that we're going to do upon further review today at eight thirty, so that they don't have to mess with it. <clears throat> oh, we but are. We are. We're going to do. Upon, oh, hey, that might have been some good news to pass on to your producer. Well, I'm sorry. I we're on the fly here today. <laughs> I thought you were. Oh, staying. it's going to be that no, way for me tomorrow. No, I might as well get some practice at now because we made that decision yesterday. Yesterday, and I thought you were standing right there when when that was made. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you guys, you'll, you'll love it. You'll be, you'll be, everybody will be in hog heaven uh, tomorrow oh, with man. with uh, hacks and level. Um, should we on take, the mic? Upon further review, should have to predict how many text messages they get on the Yates phone oh my god chat line. like we love Tell you can we have this, this every is the day greatest thing yeah. ever. <laughs> get rid of chuck and jamie <laughs> does They're... one of them um have to act like a jerk and one of them uh have to say arkansas for math equations i don't know no i don't th- I'm, sh- I'm sure i'm sure there'll be I'm sure there'll be plenty of Plenty of things like that. There'll be again. There'll be, it'll, it'll be a love fest. I know that, which is great. I mean, it's awesome. Great. I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm about super. It. I'm, I'm excited for them. <laughs> and I don't. I don't know which. One, they'll both be happy to be here too. I think they will. Yeah, I think I they'll think both they be happy to be here tomorrow. So they both seem excited. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. So. I mean, when you get to work alongside that kind of talent, why wouldn't you be excited? I don't know. Like it's the same excitement I come in equal, with every day. Equal. Equal talent. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie can hard, Jamie could so hardly get to work uh, in the morning. He drives fifty five in a seventy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully, Hacks will yell, um, you know, a guns up three ball at some point. Oh sure, yeah. Bang. Level, level will yell in your face or something. Yeah, and it'll yeah. be greatness. Yeah, commenting on the officials and things like that too. Um, you know what I told you know. <laughs> kind of rich. <laughs> I know. You know what I. I told uh, I told one of the officials yesterday, Brian Garland, when we were talking before the about pre- level and Haxton no, being no, on. I was, no, I was oh, just te- okay. I was just telling him, I was just telling him, you can't give me a technical today because you won't be able to hear me. <laughs> I've been kind of concerned about that with <laughs> when they get a little close to me. It's like <laughs> it's only been a little little concerned. A little Jeff, why are you rolling you, your eyes over there? <laughs> if you cost Krista Gerlich a technical foul, I'm not going to do that. 
she has every right to go to Learfield and request a new color analyst. Oh, she 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 loves Fink and I. You think. get her a technical. I don't think she'll love you as no, much. She might anymore. love us more. She might love us more. <laughs> hey, I got this a uh, couple texts that I got in from our various discussions. Um, uh, my friend Bill says this. I think the slippage in the NCAA rules began after people started opening Christmas presents before Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the the lucky lady was trying to make sense of what I said with regard to transfers would be, you know, coming in to, to play right away. She's trying to look at this from an academic standpoint and try to make it all make sense, right? She said to me, they aren't enrolled. Some still have to graduate high school. And then she, she followed that up with, I think she got sense of her sense and said, oh, never mind. Because she needs to understand that academically there's a set of rules and then there's a set of rules for the football team. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you have to be enrolled to, to compete for a university, right? Right. That's some, well, you do now. You do, you do today. Yeah. You do, you, you do, you do today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, whether that happens in the future or not, I do not, I do not know. I do not know. I would think that all always yeah. stay that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think at some point in time, when when you decide to transfer, you're just going to be eligible the next week for the next team. Like if you go, hey, peace out, Texas Tech. I'm 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 going to leave end of the semester, and then they're going to go play for fill in the blank university or the fill in the blank university, and says, hey, peace out. I'm going to love it because the NIL money's better there. <sighs> Do you think at some point, like when the rumor is, and I and I love, I love uh, how stories change over years. I love those the end of the truth better than the real truth, because like if you talk to some old timers here when they recruited Donnie Anderson to come to Lubbock, that they had a a line of pretty girls that were like lined up at the airport just to greet him. Okay, mm-hmm. do you think now you just have the fat? NIL boosters <laughs> lined up to greet the guys out at the airport instead of the pretty girls. Wow. Do you think that's? Think you I mean, maybe that? not insult the people who are donating yeah. millions of dollars. To I mean, the these university. are all your friends, Chuck. Well, they they know they're they know that they are out of shape. You know, <laughs> they they know that. There's out of shape, and then there's they, fat. They know that. That's they 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 know they know. Comments that. made by John Kynes do not necessarily reflect those of the rest of the morning drive. Isn't that? I'm surprised that's we don't have that every day. I, I was going to say that's no, no, Jamie. That's not every day. That is. Come on, that is every time. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um. <laughs> Somebody says this. A new listener says this. Oh my gosh, Chuck's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. So welcome to the morning drive. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9, except for tomorrow when Jeff Haxton and Chris Level will grace the studio with the golden tones here on Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. Right? I know I'm going to be listening. Well, you're, yeah. I'm going to be listening. You're going to be following up then <laughs> on, on the road to Shreveport because you're going to be in Shreveport. Are you going to make somebody else drive you there today? Yeah, the limo driver. Is he? Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't drive myself. No, goodness, no. Why would we? Why would we? Why would we do that? Why would we not make sure that somebody's driving you there and make sure they deliver you safe and sound to, to Shreveport? Uh, we'll have uh, boots on the ground all day tomorrow after the morning drive as part of the road to Shreveport. Saturday it continues, so beginning at noon with the road to Shreveport. Optimum Game Day live from Shreveport. That's after Thetford and Ashby on Saturday morning. And then, of course, we'll have the kickoff at 8.15. And after the game, Garrett Luft for the Double T 97.3 Coors Light post-game show. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at DoubleT97.3.com.